Hi, welcome to this course. Uh, this course is about fabrication techniques for MAMS based sensors from clinical perspective. So, when we talk about uh, clinical research, right, what does that mean and how it is really useful? So, there is a saying which goes like this that the solution for the big problems lie in small things that is true for our actual life as well as in case of research. When we understand the properties from the micro and nano perspective, we can really understand what lies, what kind of problem lies and what kind of solutions we can design. So, when you talk about micro and nano right, what do you mean by micro and nano and how it can be useful. So, in this particular course, we will be understanding several devices that we can fabricate using a technology called micro technology right. And in particular, we will focus on micro electromechanical systems based technologies as well as base sensors. This can be a microchip, it can be a flexible sensor, it can be a microfluidic chip. Right. It can be a device for drug screening, it can be a device to evaluating the efficacy of the drug, right. it can be a device that can measure the weight of a fly, a house fly. So, how you can, how you can design these devices and how, what are the process for designing these devices. So, we will take each device into detail right, and understand uh, uh, from research point of view, how we can use this device to solve a particular problem in clinics. So, when I talk about this kind of problems, uh, we, should, we should understand first that where exactly we are talking about and when, uh, what exactly we are talking about. So, it is not just from clinical perspective that we can make these devices, but these devices are used in several other applications. So, if you see the slide, if you see the screen, what we see is that we are talking about 10 to minus 6, which is about 1 micron to 10 to minus 9, which is about 1 nanometer, right. And if you talk about our human hair, right, human hair it is around 100 microns, it is around 100 microns you see this value right. Average human hair thickness is about 100 microns, but we are talking about one tenth of that, we are talking about one micron. In fact, we are talking about one nanometer right, that means um, a micro means uh, mean one millionth right, you see one by 10 lakh if I want to just say uh, in terms of lakh, it is 10 lakh right, 1 by 1 millionth or if we only talk about nano right, it is uh, 1 billionth right, 1 by 1 billionth. So, uh, these are extremely small, these are extremely small uh, values and it is extremely important to understand something called a recipe recipe. Hmm. Recipe or process flow. Hmm. So, it is very important to understand what is a recipe and what is a process flow. So, when you talk about man molecular manufacturing, molecular manufacturing, what does that mean? Precision down to the atomic level, precision down to the atomic level. When you talk about nanotubes, we are talking about building advanced lightweight material as an advancement in LCD technologies. When you talk about medicine, we have devices that will flow through the circulatory system as well as devices that can evaluate the efficacy of the drug as well as devices that can uh, understand and help us to uh, screen the drug right as well as devices that can be used for uh, uh, for several surgi surgical applications. So, we will see these devices, we will focus more on this particular aspect. 
then we can also use this technology we can also use this technology for nano composites that is assisting assisting in vast improvement in material compositions finally this this technology is also used in electronics when we talk about electronics right we talk about mosfets complementary mosfets complementary metal oxide semiconductors and how we can fabricate this MOSFETs and circuits that are used in electronics. So, you see that when you understand the concept of micro and nano, when you understand the concept of micro and nano and the technology behind it, then you can apply your knowledge into several fields. It is not just limited to clinical perspective, but it can be used for electronics, it can be used for robotics, it can be used for uh, building novel materials. It can be used for understanding the molecular manufacturing, right. So, uh, it, it has a vast application, it has a vast application. So, today's lecture is focused on showing you few devices, few devices uh, that can be used in clinics or to solve problems uh, which are related to medicine, all right. So, let us see and uh, we will talk about this devices in this particular lecture and we will take each devices and see how it can be fabricated. So, when you understand fabrication from process flow to recipe of each device then you can use this device by using the clean room right and, and understanding how the clean room can be used or how the equipment in the clean room should be used so to fabricate these devices. So, let us see this slide, the first slide that you can see here right what are these slides it is showing micro heaters this is showing micro heaters right so when i when i talk about micro heaters you can see very clearly right that the this is the bar is about 3 millimeter 3 millimeter hmm? and the width of this the width of line the line this line is about 100 micrometers is about 100 micrometers all right the spacing is about 100 micrometers so width is 100 micrometers width 100 micrometers spacing 100 micrometers all right and you, if you see this this particular image this is a silicon wafer you can see right right it is an oxidized silicon wafer it's an oxidized silicon wafer all right and then on oxide we can if you see this part then it is chrome gold what is it chrome gold. So, now the question is why we have designed this particular the heater in this particular fashion right why we have designed the heater in this particular fashion. So, the what is resistance resistance if we say R equals to rho L by A right that means if I want to have a resistance of a higher value I should decrease my area and or I can increase my length for a given metal resistivity remains constant right. So, here by using this design which is a design of a coil right rectangular coil we are increasing the length we are increasing the length and hence the resistance you got it we are increasing the length and hence the resistance ok one thing. Second thing second thing where are these micro heaters used micro heaters are used in lot of applications such as sensors and when I talk about sensors these are gas sensors gas sensors. Then this micro heaters 
are used in something called chip for antibiotic resistance. antibiotic resistance chips. These sensors are used for microfluidics, microfluidics right. So, when you say this sensors, when the sensors consist of heater and or directly heaters are used in microfluidics, heaters can be used in a sensor that is used for uh, antibiotic resistance, heaters are used in sensors that is used for measuring different gases or measuring different volatile organic compounds, volatile organic compounds. So, when you talk about volatile organic compound that compounds what does a compound means? VOC means a compound that is organic in nature and that is volatile also in nature. So, what is that, what are the example of VOCs? When you talk about VOCs right volatile V O L A T I L E volatile right organic O R G A N I C organic compounds C O M P O U N D S compounds. What are these volatile organic compounds? Hmm? So, like I said it is organic compound that is volatile good, but can you give me an example? The example is gasoline. So, we say here petrol it can be diesel right it can be diesel it can be acetone right that we use in nail polish remover it can be ethanol it can be ethanol, it can be methanol, it can be isopropyl alcohol, it can be butanol right. And if you want to detect this VOCs and we will see one application, if you want to detect this VOCs then you need to design a sensor and this sensor the sensing material works better at a higher temperature. So, to raise the temperature of the sensing material we you have to use we have to use heater right and the sensors are all micron in size or they consist of uh, uh, different patterns which are microns in size and here we have to use heaters also in micro, micro dimensions and that is why there is the importance of micro heater. So, we will see how we can fabricate a micro heater on an oxidized silicon substrate. The reason of using oxidized silicon substrate is that when we use silicon and directly if we deposit metal then we will not get actual value of metal because of semiconductor is because there is a semiconductor below it. Right. So, silicon is a semiconductor, so, we cannot deposit uh, silic uh, metal on semiconductor right. So, we have to have an oxide layer on silicon wafer and then on that oxide layer we can deposit a metal and this oxide layer will act as an insulator right. So, oxide layer acts as an insulator. So, now when we have to fabricate this micro heater right what are the process flow and what is the recipe we will see in this particular lecture series. Let us see another device ok, let us see another device. What do you see here? We see here there are interdigitated electrodes right, it is called interdigitated that means you have digits this is one digit, this is second digit, third digit, fourth digit, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth if digits are inter interlocked like this interdigitated interdigitated right and if i measure a impedance if i measure a resistance or impedance across this it will be infinite correct because there is nothing it is not touching but if i deposit any material on this then i can see the change in the resistance so these are the 
electrodes that are used to measure the change in resistance or impedance of the material. So, this particular structure if you closely see there is a micro heater here these are contact for micro heaters and if you see this particular diagram this one hmm, you can see micro heater right over here. And then on that micro heater there is interdigitated or there are interdigitated electrodes, but again you cannot have let us say this is silicon right this is silicon dioxide then this is the heater the heater is of metal right metal so, interdigitated electrodes this one interdigitated electrodes also written as IDEs are also made up of metal and you cannot have metal on metal that means that you should have an insulating layer on which you can design interdigitated electrodes right. So, this one is your insulating layer. So, if you see any of this device any of this one this one this one there is a micro heater at the bottom hmm? is a micro heater at the bottom on which there is an insulator which can be a silicon dioxide or silicon nitride hmm? on and on that we have patterned we have patterned interdigitated electrodes right. You can see here in this particular diagram there is oxidized silicon wafer on which oxidized silicon wafer is silicon wafer with silicon dioxide right on which there are micro heaters or there is a micro heater here there is a single micro heater as you can see on which there is an insulator on which there is interdigitated electrodes which are patterned which are patterned using lithography lithography all right and we will see the application of this interdigitated electrodes on SiO2 on micro heater in few examples later on few examples later on. So, now we are we are complicating the, the design of the, the sensor right earlier we have just seen micro heater now we are talking about micro heater on that another layer of silicon dioxide another layer of uh, 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 interdigitated electrodes right. So, this will get on complicating when we design complex sensors this is very simple example micro heater insulator and interdigital electrodes, but that can be more complex examples we will see ok uh, we will see if you go to the next slide if you go to the next slide what we will see another device another device and this is a flexible catheter for sensors flexible force sensors for catheter or flexible catheter force sensors for atrial fibrillation for atrial fibrillation all right. So, what is atrial fibrillation what does atrial fibrillation means and how we can design a flexible force sensor for such an application right for such an application. And what is the use of actually designing a force sensor for atrial fibrillation? We have to understand that, right. So, we will understand what exactly atrial fibrillation means, we will see how we can design a force sensor and how we can integrate this force sensor on the catheter so that it can measure the catheter contact force, so that it can measure the catheter contact force, all right. So, we will see how we can design this particular sensor and uh, uh, what kind of experiment that we can perform to understand the, uh, uh, the characteristics of the force sensor that we have designed and this is again a medical application right because we are designing a force sensor for atrial fibrillation something to do with heart right. Uh, so, if we have if I want if I know micro engineering if I know micro fabrication I can design a sensor that can be used for surgical applications you see it is used for uh, uh, catheters that are used for 
uh, atrial fibrillation which is a disease in heart. So, we will see the uh, this application. If I go to the next slide, what I can see? I can see that there are cantilevers and if you closely see there is a piezoregister, piezoregister embedded in oxidized silicon or embedded in polysilicon, not oxidized silicon, piezoregister embedded in polysilicon. And at the end of the cantilever, at the tip of the cantilever or at the end of the edge of the cantilever in this side, hmm, this one, there is a SUA tip there is a SUA tip right. So, this cantilever the thickness thickness of this cantilever is 2 micrometer 2 micrometer right. We are talking about human hair 100 micrometer thickness of human hair is 100 micrometer. We are looking at a cantilever which is about 2 micrometer. Hmm? And the reason of having piezo resistor is that when we press this cantilever, there will be change in resistance. That is the property of piezo resistor, right. When you apply pressure, when you apply force, there is a change in piezo resistors because of the strain created in the piezo resistor. So, because when we have, when we apply a force like this, right, it will bend in this direction like this, right. Then there is a strain in this area strain which causes a change in the which causes a change in the resistor embedded in the cantilever right. Now, we can, we can also see here in this particular diagram that there is a piezo resistive cantilever once again which is bent which is bent right. What is the reason of what is the reason of bending? what is the reason of bending, why it is bent and why this is not right. That is because of the recipe that I was talking about right. So, we should know what is the recipe for fabricating these devices. If the recipe is wrong, then you will have this kind of device, but what we require is this one right. So, we will see how we can fabricate this piezo resistive micro cantilever and how it can be used for several applications including including measuring the properties of tissue. Including measuring the properties of tissue right. So, when you talk about tissue right uh, the stiffness of the tissue is different stiffness of the tissue is different so, can we measure a stiffness using piezo resistive micro cantilever that is a question right can we measure the stiffness of the tissue using piezo resistive micro cantilevers and if we can measure the stiffness of tissue then we can use this for diagnosing uh, uh, a, a case called breast cancer right. So, we will see how it can be used for understanding the mechanical properties mechanical properties of the tissue. Hmm. Let us go next. Now, same example which is your interdigitated electrodes you can see here interdigitated electrodes. Hmm. And if I have an interdigitated electrode, okay, what are the applications? I told you that one application of interdigitated electrode would be measuring the resistance or impedance. So, when you talk about resistance or impedance, you require some mat material to be kept on the interdigitated electrodes, right. So, if you keep a tissue a tissue on the interdigitated electrodes what we can measure we can measure impedance why because there is a solution required to keep the tissue alive right and that is pbs 
okay, is a silent solution. Uh, so, if I have interdigitated electrodes and on that if I place a tissue on which I have a solution that I cannot just measure resistance right, because there are several parasitic components that comes into play such as double layer capacitance right. So, now instead of measuring resistance what I will measure? I will measure impedance, I will measure impedance of the tissue. So, now if your device or if you can design a device that can measure the impedance of tissue or it can measure impedance of cells as the disease progresses then you are measuring the electrical property of tissue or cell is not it right. So, what, what we will do by measuring electrical property of tissue? what we did by measuring mechanical property of tissue. Same thing we will do by electrical property of tissue that means that if I can see the change in the tissue properties as the disease progresses and let us take an example of a breast cancer or oral cancer or any other cancer related to tissue and my sensor can give these changes can measure the signature can measure the electrical and mechanical signature of the tissue or of the cell I can diagnose. I can use this device as diagnosing device for the cancer right. So, now we are using interdigitated electrodes without any heater for understanding the properties of tissue and these are the electrical property of tissue. But when I talk about electrical property of tissue right I need to first have interdigitated electrodes and when I talk about that this tissue is there we have to load a PBS that is a solution right then the if I load this solution on the glass slide it will it will not stay on the point right. So, we have to create a well to hold this solution the hold the solution. So, we will see how we can create this kind of device uh, that is a interdigital electrodes within an SU8 well that is another uh, another device that we can design from the biomedical application from the clinical perspective right. So, this is what we can see here on the slide this is you can see that the tissue is placed on the interdigitated electrodes and you can see here the interdigitated electrodes are fabricated using chrome and gold and the spacing and width the width and spacing of this interdigitated electrodes is 10 micron and the well is made up of SU8 well is made up out made up of SU8 right. So, uh, we will see how we can use uh, this kind of device for uh, measuring the tissue property particularly electrical property of tissue electrical property of tissue ok. Let us move to the next slide. Now, we will also understand how we can design how we can design a tool a tool that can be used for diagnosing cancer and to understand the designing of this tool that can be used to diagnose cancer we again need the basic understanding of what we call micro technology micro technology right. So, here we will be understanding or we will be studying several modalities several modalities when we uh, when I say several modalities one is mechanical another is electrical another is thermal mechanical electrical thermal thermal properties all three properties of a tissue if I want to measure can I design a sensor that can measure all three properties or can I design a biochip that can measure all three properties of tissue when I say all three properties the electrical properties mechanical properties thermal properties and I do not only want to design the biochip, but I also want to integrate this biochip in a tool such that when the tissue is out the tissue is taken from the biopsy we will see how the tissues are taken out. Once the tissue is out from the biopsy I can place the tissue on this tool and I can just press a button uh, or or a pathologist if it is a pathology lab the pathologist will just press a button and he or she will be able to see what are the changes in the tissue properties and thus this can be a aid to the surgeon. This device this tool can be aid <coughs> sorry this can be a aiding tool 
to the surgeon. Right. So, why we require aiding tool for the surgeon? Is the gold standard not enough? Right now, how cancer is diagnosed? Right. So, we have to understand these things and then only we can design a particular tool that can be used for understanding the tissue properties. So, now uh, we will see you as you see that right, right starting from the micro heater then we come came to inter digital electrodes then we make to cantilever and then we went to inter digital electrodes within SU 812. Now, we are talking about uh, uh, one more sensor uh, that can be integrated and that is thermal sensor. So, thermal sensor can be my micro heater we can use micro heater for thermal sensing we had to use a piezo resistive material that is the we can use any piezo resistive material like, like example is P dot PSS which is a conducting polymer and then we have to use a electric sensor to measure the tissue properties. So, all three sensors integrated on a biochip how we can do that right how we can do that. So, we will see in this uh, series of lecture how we can fabricate such kind of device all right. Now, let us see another another device and this device is used for drug screening right drug screening. So, how we can design this drug screening device and what is the use of this drug screening device right. So, uh, right now if a patient has to be given a particular drug which drug would be more effective from a patient point of view right. Every drug and every patient responds to the drug in a different way. So, can we design a device that is patient centric what is it patient centric right such that we take the cells from the patient and we load in the device and we pass different drugs next to these cells and see the response of the cells or tissue with respect to different drugs then we can understand which drug is more effective. So, to measure this response either we can use impedance or we can use the fluorescence technique. Fluorescence technique right now is used uh, in, in bio labs right. So, what I was saying that if I take a cell let us say if I take a cell from my hand let us say from here right I take a tissue I take a tissue I place the tissue in the microfluidic chip right I slice the tissue place the tissue in microfluidic chips pass the drug and if the drug is effective tissue will start dying. That the death of the tissue if I can measure by using some sensor that is integrated within this microfluidic chip right then I can understand which drug is more effective for my body. Now, we, we are not talking about just uh, if I get sick and I have to take out the tissue right we are not talking about that kind of device we are talking about device when it is cancer and when the drug that is administered to the patient or drug that is given to the patient is extremely important because it is a it is a it is a matter of life and death right. Which drug would be more effective and which not because every patient will respond differently. So, now as an engineer as a micro engineer who knows micro engineering and micro technology can you design a device that can be used from patient centric point of view for rapid drug screening you get it. So, we will see how you can design this device right. So, that when we use this device then based on the result a proper drug can be given to a proper patient and it may change from patient to patient right J thus making the the delivery of drug thus making the screening of the drug more effective all right. So, if you see the screen what we see that there is a micro heater right on which there should be an insulator on which there are electrodes and this everything. So, this one and this one should be on one chip and for flowing I need a channels this channels I can fabricate using soft lithography using 
soft lithography all right and the material that you can see here this material right that cube is PDMS the material is PDMS right. So, can we design a tool or can we design a device that can be used for rapid drug screening. So, we will see this device how we can fabricate this device and how it can be used and what are the what are the preliminary results that I obtained using this particular device. Similarly, these are all research problems you can work on this you can design these devices by understanding this what we are understanding we are gaining expertise or we are understanding or we are improving our knowledge for designing several sensors that can be used from research point of view right. Can you can you do can you do some kind of research uh, by gaining this experience uh, from this course right that is the idea of this particular course. Okay. At least you know the process flow. Once you know the process flow, when you go to clean room for fabrication of the device, you will not be like uh, blank. You will know, okay, this devices or this equipment is used for this particular device. We will also see kind of equipment that are used for fabricating device, not only process flow and recipe. All right. So, if I go to next slide, and next slide is for antibiotic susceptibility we will see how we can design right a microchip that you can see here right over here for understanding antibiotic susceptibility. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean? Right and we can also divide design a microfluidic chip for understanding the antibiotic susceptibility. So, if you ever went to doctor right if you went to doctor and you have some kind of infection right. The doctor will generally prescribe tropical antibiotics that is 3 4 antibiotics to eat right and we, we take this medicine we eat and we pay doctor right. Why to eat 3 4 medicines why not one right why not one why to eat 3 4 tropical antibiotics. Because, because first which antibiotic would be useful we do not know, we do not know right. Even we know that this is a bacterial infection and this infection is due to particular bacteria and there are medicines antibiotics meant for killing those bacteria. still we have to take 3 4 antibiotics because we do not know which antibiotic would be useful for killing this bacteria or will the bacteria would be uh, having a resistance against antibiotic we do not know neither do the doctor. Right. So, one is we are we are given the antibiotic, second is we are our blood is taken or a urine sample is taken for further understanding what bacteria and suppose bacteria is known what antibiotic to give. And the results from the pathology comes in 24 to 48 hours, 24 to 48 hours in some cases even more, some cases even more time is taken for giving you the results okay this antibiotic would be more effective with this particular bacteria since the patient is suffering from this particular disease right. It is known like if I have a urinary tract infection then I know that the E coli that is bacteria called E coli would be in higher concentration right. But which antibiotic to use that will uh, a doctor can a doctor can generally uh, understand based on the reports from the path lab. Now, it is ok, it is ok, I do not say that uh, the current current way of uh, medicine is wrong, it is what it is, this is what we know right. But the idea is why we cannot reduce this time, why we have to wait for 24 hours, why we, we have to wait for 48 hours to get the report. Can you can you design a device that can uh, perform the analysis within a shorter period of time 
by requiring a lesser sample why I have to give like 10 ml of blood or even 20 ml of blood or, or even 1 ml of blood. How about microliters? How about similar to glucometer? I just puncture and that is it, that is enough for me to give. Right. So, reducing the sample size, rapidly getting the diagnosis and, and uh, giving a correct, correct antibiotic to the patient, not correct, these are all are correct antibiotics by the way. The, the antibiotic that will be effective for this particular bacteria. If we can do this whole thing within a shorter period of time using a device, then that will be really awesome, is not it. Now, again you understand from our point of view, I, if I have a bacterial infection, if a doctor gives me a uh, antibiotics, I can take antibiotic and wait for 2 days, even this antibiotic, one of the antibiotic is useful, another one is not, I, I, it, it, my immune system can take it. But what about neonates, what about babies, right? There are lot of bacterial infection in neonates and the immune system of a baby is extremely weak. So, in that case waiting for 24 to 48 hours may cause a death or life threatening issue for a neonate. Thus, this kind of device that can do a rapid testing of antibiotic uh, uh, medicines right, or antibiotics and can tell that the bacteria is resistance or not, it is extremely useful. Right. So, for that we will see how we can design a microchip or a microfluidic device, right. so that is what we see on this uh, screen, a microfluidic chip for rapid bacterial antibiotic susceptibility testing. Right. We will see this device, how we can fabricate this device. Now, I go to another device. I go to another device and these are microfluidic chip, again you can see is a microfluidic chip, these are SEM images of microfluidic chip and this is just a, a mold, image of the mold, mold that is made in silicon and we will see why we have made this mold in silicon, what is the use of this device, we will see everything. Okay. So, what is the idea? The idea is that if I want to understand that which drug can be used for killing this cancer, suppose this is a cancerous tissue and you can see here vessels right, blood vessels supplying oxygen and nutrition to the cancerous tissue, supplying oxygen and nutrition to the cancerous tissue and then you can see here there is a extracellular matrix alright. So, I want to test a drug that will start or stop that will stop growing of these vessels. If the vessels are stopped, if the, ves the growth of vessels are stopped or the vessels are destroyed, right, the vessels that are providing nutrition and oxygen to the tumor are destroyed, right. Then what kind of drug would be effective or what kind of combination of drug would be effective? What kind of suppose there are 3 drugs 1, 2 and 3, one will be effective, second will be effective or, or third will be effective or combination of 1 and 2 will be effective or combination of 2 and 3 will be effective or combination of 1 and 3 will be effective or combination of all 3 will be effective. Right. If I want to study this combination or we call combinational therapy, what we call combinational C O M B I N A T I O N A L combinational therapy all right combinational therapy. Then what can I do? I can design a microfluidic chip that mimics the same thing and I can test different drugs. I can test different drugs whether drug is effective or not that is drug efficacy, whether drug is effective in killing the tubules 
or in destroying the vessels that are supplying oxygen and nutrition to the tumor. If the nutrition and oxygen is stopped, then the tumor will start dying because tumor is nothing but group of cells growing abnormally. Right? So, this is another uh, device that we will be looking at uh, from the clinical perspective. Uh, then we go to the next slide. All right, and this is a very interesting uh, application of um, flexible MEMS, right? Flexible micro electromechanical sensors uh, or MEMS based systems based sensors for phenotyping or understanding tissue properties. All right. And we will see how the process flow happens, how this device looks like. If you see closely, this device uh, has this particular pattern, right? And actually, there are array of these patterns, array of these patterns, all right. And these arrays are nothing but strain gauge, what is that? Strain gauge. What is the use of strain gauge? Strain gauge is nothing but when we apply strain, it will change uh, in the resistance, it is a kind of piezo resistor. So, I can make this array of sensors using P dot PSS. P dot PSS is a conductive polymer. What is it? Conductive polymer, polymer that is conductive. All right. One. Second, if I have an insulator on it, insulator on this, right, and on insulator, if I have gold pads, you can see here gold pad hmm, patterns, and 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 by the way, everything that you see here, like here in the center, the consists of piezo resistor and gold pad and SU impeder. It is right here. You see, so tiny, super tiny. You see, this is one millimeter. 1 millimeter. So, it is about about 1 millimeter within that area we have the sensors within that area we have the sensors. Okay. So, anyway coming back to here if we have if I have piezo resistors on which I have an insulator on which I there, there is a gold pad and on gold pads there are SU8 pillars there are SU8 pillars then I have a sensor if the substrate is flexible substrate is flexible, then I can use this sensors right and as SU pillar we can make it conductive, we can make it conductive. I can use this sensor for measuring the electrical and mechanical property of a material and we will see how, we will see how we can use this, uh, this device for measuring the electrical and mechanical property of the material. And you can see here that the contact pads, the you see it is like zigzag right it is like here it is not straight line why to have this kind of pattern why not to have straight line hmm? what is the designing problem in, the, in 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 this one or this one why we have selected this particular design we will see that as well we will see that as well so that you understand that how you can design this kind of flexible sensors right for your particular application because you see i am showing some of the application of my work my research right but what about the the problems that you come up with if you come up with a unique problem and you want to so you want to find a solution for that particular problem you have to design your own sensors by by understanding this flexible sensors what we were talking about right can you use a concept and can you create your own sensor that is the idea all right guys so what what i'll do is i'll teach you how to fabricate this flexible sensors using the mems technology all right so there are few more devices there are few more devices that we have to see and those devices we will see in the second module Right. This is an introductory module where you I wanted to uh, you to get familiarized uh, with lot of devices uh, different kind of sensors uh, and MEMS based technology right and how these sensors or devices or microfluidic chips can be used uh, for clinical perspective from clinical perspective actually right. So, but, but uh, uh, please make sure or please understand this thing 
that this is not only uh, one area where you can use the uh, knowledge of microengineering. We will see uh, the fabrication and you can use this fabrication for designing sensors for other applications as well. Right. So, I will show you devices that are used for clinical perspective, but you can make a devices which can be used for electronics, which can be used for robotics. For example, if I want to have a touch sensor, a robot wants to have a touch sensor. Can you design this touch sensor using the, the, using the knowledge that you acquire in this subject? That is the idea. All right. So, uh, we will be looking at uh, from that point of view as well uh, that if I want to design a flexible force sensors or a touch sensors what kind of uh, what kind of changes in the design can be. All right. So, I will see you in the next module we will discuss few more uh, devices and then we will start uh, understanding uh, microfabrication. We will see the process flow how you can design a device, what are the techniques used for designing this device such as what are the uh, equipment used, how a clean room looks like, what are the uh, equipment within the clean room and then we will see each device in detail and how it can be used for solving a particular problem. All right. Till then you again just look at the lecture um, uh, at the end of this particular uh, course uh, you will be understand. Uh, you, you will understand uh, how you can fabricate uh, a device at least using the uh, process flow at least on paper. And then in the next course uh, I have a plan to uh, go to the fab lab and perform actual experiments. But to go to that level first we need to understand how we can fabricate devices or how we can design the process flow and recipe for the device. All right. So, I will see you in the next class till then you take care.